Hey guys, welcome to my mountain bikers med kit video. Uh, today I'm going to be going over the med kit that I carry on my mountain biking backpack. And this kit is uh, specially for mountain biking. And um, I'm going to go through all the contents of it, show you what I like to bring along with me. It's always a good idea, you know, to have a med kit with you when you're out there on the trail, uh, especially the trails that are more remote and difficult to access, uh, especially for, you know, emergency personnel. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you'll be out, geez, you know, San Juan Trail comes to mind maybe. Uh, I live in Southern California and uh, there's really not any fire, fire roads uh, from one point to the other and it's 11 miles in each direction. So, you know, it's good to be prepared and to have some emergency supplies with you. Um, you know, obviously there is a challenge of mountain biking. You want to keep things lightweight. You can't keep a, you know, toolbox full of junk with you. Um, so it did definitely have that in mind with this pack. Uh, and it weighs only about one and a half pounds, guys. So this whole little accessory apartment right here that I have uh, attached to my backpack only weighs one and a half pounds. And if you're wondering, this is a Camelback uh, backpack and it's got this nice molly webbing on it so that I could attach an external pack like this to it. And it's just held in place with this strap right here and a little buckle or some plastic buckles in the back there. So yeah, let's go ahead and just get into it, you know, um, and I'll just open her up. Like I said, it's really helpful guys to have some emergency supplies with you, some first aid supplies when you're out there in the middle of friggin nowhere, right? So what comes to mind? Uh, how about Mount St. Helens? Last time I checked, there's not any fire roads up there. <laughs> it's all single track. Or how about Kenneshaw Pass out in Colorado? Yeah, good luck getting there. Um, you probably fly a helicopter up there actually, but you know, that's not cheap, right? So it's good to have a pack with you that, you that can help you get back to your truck so you can have a beer, right? So anyways, all right, let's dig in here. Um, this, this pack itself is a Maxpedition pack. Uh, I've had it for a couple of years, and it's really I've beaten the, the crap out of it. I mean, I throw my backpack in the back of my truck or on the ground all the time, and it's really held up well. So, good, good pack. Uh, the first thing I have here are some protective gloves in case uh, you know I need to do CPR or help one of my buddies who's gushing red stuff everywhere so that's always a good thing to have right um, I'll just kind of dump this all out and just go through it real quickly for you so we don't spend too much time but one thing I do keep with me specific to mountain biking is some salt so I like to keep this you know even just um, just this little tiny amount can really be a big difference if you you know, haven't been taking in the right amount of sodium, you've been sweating just a ton and only replacing that sweat with plain water. Um, you need those electrolytes, right? And I've, I've been in instances with friends riding where this is pretty much a lifesaver. I mean, you know, you're on the side of the trail huddled under a bush and the sun's beating down on you. You've been drinking water all day on say the Palm Canyon Epic Trail Maybe you still have water, but you haven't been taking enough sodium because it's 100 degrees outside and you just haven't been eating any salty foods. Well, eventually you're going to start cramping. You're going to start feeling just super fatigued, kind of like bonking, and you're not going to be able to, uh, to ride anymore. So I gave some salt one time to a buddy and he perked right up in 10 minutes and went from pushing his bike to riding his bike so he could get out of the heat faster. So that was good to have. Another thing that's great on desert trails or just really anywhere, some tweezers. Good for pinching your friends if they're riding too slow, but also picking out stingers from bugs or 
cactus needles, right? I'm sure everyone that's seen this video has run into a cactus or 12 in their day. Um, I keep some contact lenses with me because I wear contacts. And then what else we got here? Got some meds in here, ibuprofen, some harder meds for myself in case something really bad happens. Hopefully I'll never have to take them. Uh, smelling salt, you know, again for your friends that fall asleep on the trail, right? Stick that under their nose, it should wake them up. A uh, couple of safety pins for bandages, which I'll show you later. Um, these are real good guys. These are wound closure strips and they're kind of like a, you know, temporary sutures, right? So I don't know about you, but I've never been trained in um, stitching anyone. I, I do want to take an EMS class, but I don't think I would probably suture anyone else, maybe myself, but then I'd probably pass out doing it, looking at it, but these are kind of like a good replacement, temporary replacement for, for stitches on the trail. So get you back and, um, you know, help close lacerations, skin lacerations. Uh, I actually used one of these on the cut I got on my finger right here that was 180 degrees. So I used some wound closure strips, just wrapped them around my finger and did the trick. Uh, and then in here I've got some 4x4s for bleeding as well as a quick quick clot. Uh, just added this to my kit. It's pretty pretty thin. It is like a, a little bit heavier, but I think it's because it's made of a clay material. But um, this is supposedly really good for stopping bleeding um, and can replace, you know, you put this directly on the the wound and then maybe put a pad or two and then your bandage if it's really bad. So here's the bandage that I use. This is called an Israeli bandage. It's uh, vacuum sealed and what's cool about this bandage is it's self-contained. It's got like a couple of little plastic parts in here that help you uh, secure the bandage to itself so you don't have to use any any tape or, or tie anything a funny way. Um, and it's pretty lightweight. Uh, so you can check out other videos on, on this bandage. It seems to be a pretty pretty good quality bandage. Um, you know, before I was using like a compression bandage, just a, a, a junker compression bandage, and that worked too. Um, I actually fell one time real hard on a rock on my forearm, and I, surprisingly I didn't cut myself, and I was very, very lucky not to have broken my arm because I fell with all of my weight on my arm and uh, it was in the middle of San Juan Trail right where Cocktail Rock was actually like right before it if you guys know that trail you know there's some really gnarly uh, technical rocks right around that Cocktail Rock area and uh, luckily I didn't break my arm <coughs> but um, I did you know smash it hard enough to where it started swelling pretty badly and so I wrapped this compression bandage around it and it allowed me just to get back um, and finish the ride because without the compression bandage it was weird you know my my arm was so swollen every little tiny bump hurt you know just the jiggling from the handlebars um, so the compression bandage actually worked in that regard too so there's a lot of uses for bandages so definitely have you know I like to have at least one bandage and then something for at least a couple of 4x4s if you get cut, right? So uh, moving right along here, um, this is probably one of the most important parts of the kit is your splinting. And I mean, if you break something on the trail, you're not going to want to walk around with a broken arm or a broken foot, right? But if you splint it, you can get mobile again. And that's the whole idea with this, is to get mobile so you can hike out or even ride out, get back to your truck. So what I keep with me is a 36 inch SAM splint. And uh, this splint is really, a, it's a really kind of genius idea. It's, it's uh, aluminum with some nice foam padding on the outside and you can basically unfold this and you can get kind of creative with it you know if you have like a broken ankle or something 
you can put the heel of your foot I'll just pretend my hand is my foot you can put it in like this and then you can brace your tibia and fibula, fibula like so um, that's kind of a lousy let me just show you here real quick um, you know you could brace brace it like so but uh, they've got you know some directions on the front some examples if you guys can see that uh, but this is this is really the, one of the cornerstones of my kit I mean you, there's a lot of uses uh, different bracing uses with this and uh, you know a couple of with some duct tape I got here everyone's got to have duct tape right good for removing cactus needles or you know just the fixing your splint your bandages um, duct tape's got a million uses right so put that together and you know you can at least immobilize a broken a broken bone and um, you know get creative and maybe make your way back on your own at least be more comfortable until you get some help also uh, I keep a couple little finger splints with me so you can if you bust a finger or something you can uh, you know do something like that tie it to another finger and you're good to go so splinting that way you can ride instead of hike out and some more tape I carry a little bit of athletic tape just for fingers and toes and how many times have you guys done this okay you're after work 